actually did a little session on. So what's new? What's happening in the media at the moment? And we get the usual. The first one, a report um, on, oh, first, sorry, the first one is actually the Insight Project website that I just wanted to show you that actually has a link to this year's conference as its first feature. And then there's a the, uh, link to the videos that Eddie um, produced last year. Uh, we've also got in the ABC the usual Australian students are never good enough in maths and science. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've seen that in the newspaper over the last 40 to 50 years. But we still worry, and I'm not trying to um, uh, downplay the importance that we need to continue to focus in this area for a range of reasons. But it's not as if it's a new problem, I have to say. Uh, there's an interesting report that's just come out of ACER on workplace, teacher workforce um, going into the future and where the shortages will be. I know some of you are well aware of that as you're trying to find teachers for your schools. Uh, the TMAG report that just came out on initial teacher education with a range of recommendations about how we could do better. And yes, of course, we can always do better every year you give me feedback about how we can do better. Um, and it's, we should continue to listen to uh, important stakeholders in how we can improve our teacher education. An interesting paper came out recently on how primary school teachers can have a serious influence on uh, girls in maths and science. Uh, and the whole gender issue is still alive and well. Very interesting. Finland, who a country that we often put up there on a pedestal in TIMS and PISA, the international studies, um, interestingly, they're looking at doing away with subjects and having more cross-curriculum initiatives, which they're actually calling phenomena. And so phenomena might be something around wars or something around um, the European Union, um, etc. And uh, I think it's a very interesting initiative, and I'll be watching that very keenly to see how mathematics is represented because you as you probably can tell by my tone unfortunately in a lot of cross-curriculum initiatives I think mathematics often becomes the second cousin. It'll be interesting to see when we will have this conversation again this afternoon. And finally a report a newspaper article that came out of the UK which has evidence to say that girls who study maths and science at A level, which is the highest level in the UK, actually <coughs> earn a whole lot more money than girls who don't. Who for thought? Okay. Um, I'm sort of running out of time. I really wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the TIMS item that recently uh, got a little bit of press. But I think I might just put this one up on, get Eddie to put this presentation up uh, and I let you have a look at it. But some interesting data about this TIMS U8 item and the proportions of students that chose incorrect responses and why. And I know there's a lot of press about you know negativity around that plan and those other items, but we shouldn't look, uh, we shouldn't cry away from looking at, or shy away I should say, from looking at items and why our students choose incorrect responses. That gives us a lot of information about misconceptions. Now as you can imagine, so the correct answer was D. I know you would have all got that right. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> so here's, here's the per percentage of students that were correct. The international average was 31. So as you can imagine, the countries that would have had high proportions. Here we go, Australia. But look at this. Look at this. Let me go back to A. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Now, nearly one third of our year eight students, nearly one third in Australia, thought the answer was A. And you wonder why some of you, we bang on a lot about fractions here at the uni in pre-service education and why we should be focusing on teaching of fra the fraction concept, let alone operations. You wonder why. There's some evidence. <clears throat> Interesting, look down here in Finland, the country that we often have on the pedestal. Okay. 
Enough from me. I'm going to hand over to Leon, who's going to introduce to you our first keynote speaker. 